Well, welcome to day 20 of extension to a question a day. Well done for hanging in there. This is a question about vector equations of lines. We've got lines L1 and L2 given by those two parametric equations. Line 1, line 2, show that they do not intersect. All right. Now, if they do not intersect, then our sets of simultaneous equations will be inconsistent. So I'm going to solve a pair of them, um, and then I'm going to substitute that into the third set, and that shouldn't work if they're inconsistent, and so it'll show they don't intersect. So basically, we have uh, 2 uh, plus s is x, for L1, and if they're going to intersect, that's going to equal minus 1 minus 2t on L2. And the same thing's going to happen here. Um, we've got y equals minus s, and if they're going to intersect, that's going to equal t on L2. And finally, we've got ourselves um, z is 2 minus s, and if they're going to intersect, that should equal 2 plus 3t. So what I do is I solve any two of those three different together, and then I substitute that solution into the third one. And it won't work because they don't intersect, but I've got to show that. So um, I'll just grab myself a different colour here. And I'm going to solve... I'm going to say, well, um, I'm going to substitute t equals minus s right from there into uh, the 2 plus s um, equaling minus 1 minus 2t. So 2 plus s equals minus 1 minus 2 and t is minus s. So 2 plus s equals minus 1 plus 2s. Um, I'll just give myself a bit more room here. Um, Let's uh, just head back up to the top where we were. All right, so I get um, 2s minus s is s, and 2 plus 1 is 3, right? i.e. s equals 3. And then that means from, since t is minus s, then t equals minus 3, right? So now what I need to do is check if that solution works in the green one. So now I'm going to um, sub s equals 3, t equals minus 3 into um, 2 minus s equals 2 plus 3t. So the left-hand side is 2 minus s is 2 minus 3 is minus 1. The right-hand side is 2 plus 3t, which is 2 plus 3 times minus 3, which is like minus 7. The left-hand side does not equal the right-hand side. Therefore, um, s equals 3t equals minus 3 is not a solution. of um, whatever it was, 2 minus s equals uh, 2 plus 3t. So um, what we've got is a set of uh, equations are not, in, are not consistent. Pretty important that you say that word at some point. They're not consistent. Therefore, the lines do not intersect. Which lines? Um, lines L1 and L2 do not intersect. All right. Now, the next question. The line L3 passes through the point 113, and its direction is perpendicular to the directions of both L1 and L2 obtain parametric equations for L3. All right. 
The trick with these, when you're finding a line that's uh, perpendicular to two other lines, the, the trick, because it's in 3D and there's three different variables and you need three sets of simultaneous equations, is to deliberately find a unit vector in that direction. And once you've found the unit vector, you can always size it up if you need to. Because then you'll have three equations. So I'm going to let line L3 have unit vector in the direction of its direction vector. So a unit vector that goes in the direction of its direction vector is going to be A, B, C. All right, that, that ABC there is a unit vector, but it's in the direction of the direction vector of line L3. Just, just to tell you what I mean by direction vector, if you look at the um, any, oh, let, let's just go on and I'll, I'll explain that as we get further on. So that, that's my first step to let that be the case. Now, we know that this dotted with the direction vector of L1, which is 1 minus 1 minus 1, is 0. All right, now the direction vector of L1, you can see, um, is here. I'm going to write L1 out for you so that it's a bit clearer. L1 is the point 2, 0, 2 plus lambda times, well, it's actually not lambda times, it's s times, sorry, plus s times 1 minus 1 minus 1. And that's where I got that direction vector from just then. And so the, the direction vector I'm finding ABC for line L3 is like the one on the, the right-hand side, 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1 here for this one. Um, L2, by the way, is the equation minus 1, 0, 2 plus t times minus 2, uh, 1 and 3. Just from there. All right. So uh, it's nice, nice to have those uh, written down. But let's just now go back to where we were up to. And... That's where I got the 1 minus 1 minus 1 from, the direction vector for S. And the direction vector for T is minus 2, 1, 3. All right. So um, I know that ABC dotted with that, minus, minus 2, 1, 3, also equals 0. All right. No, that's the case. That's going to yield me two simultaneous equations. And of course, because it's a unit vector, I know that the square root of a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals 1. You know, the size of that vector is 1. So those three key points there are going to yield me three simultaneous equations with three variables, three unknowns, and then I can find it. So that's the trick to use a unit vector. All right, now this actually says uh, a minus b minus c equals zero. And this says minus 2a plus b plus 3c equals zero. And um, that gives me my three equations. So I'll come down here and I'll write them out for you. a minus b minus c equals zero, um, minus 2a plus b plus 3c equals 0. And basically, you've got a squared plus b squared plus c squared equaling 1 because the square root, I just squared both sides out there. So that's my three equations. It's just a matter of showing a little bit of skill to solve them. But if you have three unknowns and three equations, generally, you're on your way there. So from... Part 1, for example, you can say that B is equal to uh, A minus C. And from part 2, you can say that B is equal to uh, 2A minus 3C. So therefore, 
a minus c equals 2a minus 3c, which means uh, 2c equals a. All right, there's, there's something. Now, um, I've got... Uh, also, that uh, 2a minus 2b minus 2c equals 0. Now, where did I get that from? Sorry. Um, I multiplied number 1 by 2. So I'll just rule off there and I'll go 1 times 2. And it gives me that, which I'll call 3. And I've got my minus 2a, uh, what was that equation? Plus b plus 3c equals 0. And see, so what I was trying to do there is to get an equation with B uh, and C. So I can, um, that was still equation two from before. And you know what? I've already got an equation three. So that's now become equation four, that one. So I'm going to add it, equation two and four. And I'll get minus 2b plus b, that's minus b minus 2c and 3c plus c equals 0. So b actually equals to c. So, hey, what can I do now that I know those two things? Well, I know that a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals 1. So 2c squared plus c squared plus c squared equals 1, because b is c and a is 2c. All right, so that's uh, 6 c squared equals 1, so c squared equals 1 on 6, so c equals root 1 on 6, but could be plus or minus. So look, we're going to let c equal root 1 on 6. Not a problem, because remember the questions it's asking us to find Um, parametric equations for L3, right? And so it's going. There could be different ways to represent that, and we just have to find one set that's going to represent it. So if C is root one on six, that's fine. Therefore, A is equal to two because uh, A is two C, so it's uh, two on root six because that's one on root six. And B is equal to C, so B is equal to 1 on root 6. All right, so I'll just write that more clearly there. You've got those three A, B, and C. Now that's your unit vector in your direction, but that's fine, it's in the right direction. All right, so for, L, for line L3, um, we've got. Um, our vectors, uh, our equation is that x, y, z is equal to 1, 1, 3, because that's um, what we're given. I'll just go back up to the question and explain where I get that from. The line L3 passes through the point 1, 1, 3. So that's the, the point. And plus I need um, um, the... Um, lambda times the direction vector. So plus lambda times the direction vector, which is 2 on root 6, 1 on root 6, and 1 on root 6. Now, that's only one possible representation. I could have used the minus 1 on root 6, and I'll tell you what, I could pull out the root 6 out of there altogether, and just the value of lambda is different. You know, like um, you could you could have that x y z is uh, what was it one one three plus you know um, and I'll do a different symbol instead of lambda, which now incorporates the root six into it, and it could just be two one one. All right, but that, that number is now no longer the same as lambda. It's still going to give you a line um, that's going to work out. So, you know, there could be various answers there that are going to work. 
Right? Now, parametric equations wise, I just want to write out my equations. So um, if I use the, the first line that I got, I'd say x would be, uh, what is it? x is 1 plus 2 lamp, 1 plus uh, 2 lambda on root 6. And y equals 1 plus lambda on root 6. And z equals 3 plus lambda on root 6. So that's the set of parametric equations. Now someone else might say, well, you know, I'm going to use, you know, for example, x equals 1 plus, and they've got that thing, right? 1 plus 2 lambda, and y equals 1 plus um, whatever you want to call that symbol, and um, z equals 3 plus, um, right? But that's just, um, we, you know, another way to represent it, you know? Um, and just out of interest, right, this is this is different to now what that that was the parametric equations, but just out of interest, um, if x equals one plus two lambda on root six, we know that uh, um, <clears throat> root six of x uh, um, let's see root six of x minus one. So you go x minus 1, then times by root 6, and divide by 2, that's equal to lambda. And also root 6 of uh, y minus 1 is equal to lambda. And also uh, root 6 of uh, z minus 3 equals to lambda. Since they're all equal to lambda, then root 6 of x minus 1 on 2 equals root 6 of y minus 1 equals root 6 of z minus 3. We can divide by root 6 and we get x minus 1 on 2 equals y minus 1 equals z minus 3. Right? Which goes to show I would get the same as if I'd just come straight from that equation that's at the top of the page there now in red. You know, if I just come straight from uh, up here, sorry, I was trying to draw it in a different colour, um, what I'd get is that uh, x minus 1 on 2 equals um, this symbol, and y minus 1 equals this symbol, and z minus 3 equals um, sorry, upside down symbol. And because they all equal the same symbol, we can legit say that x minus 1 on 2 equals y minus 1 equals z minus 3, which is the Cartesian of equation of the line. You can see the green and blue are the same, but they've come from what I've circled up there in red and what I'm now circling in green. So you can see why I'm saying different people might represent you know, what I'm ticking there as the answer, or they might say something like, that's the answer. Or they might have used the negative one on root 6. It'll still come out okay. All right, so let's just um, get back to a pink pen there. And we're going to have to now look at answering the next question. The next question, sorry, I have to go back to check this, but I've got it there. Um, Find the coordinates of the point Q where L3 and L2 intersect and verify that P lies on L1. All right, so we want Q, sorry, I've forgotten already, Q where L3 and L2 intersect. Well, that's just a straight intersection. So um, I'm... I'm that's why they, we did the parametric equations. Um, X minus, I'm going to use my root, I'm going to use my uh, root 6, X minus 1 on 2. That's equal to uh, my lambda. Actually, I'm going to use 
the parametric equations, sorry, that we worked out up above. And I'm going to stick with the, the ones that I've circled in red. So 1 plus 2 lambda on 6 is my x. All right, 1 plus 2 lambda. Uh, root 6 is equal to x and 1 plus lambda on root 6 is y and 3 plus lambda on root 6 is z, right? All right. Now, they're the parametric equations, but you could easily not have the root 6 and have it differently, like I said. But they're the parametric equations, and we want to solve those with line, they're saying line, that's line L3 that I just found, and they're saying that that intersects with line L2. So line L2 has the following um, it's got two, what does line L2 have? It's got uh, minus 1 minus 2t equals x, um, minus 1 minus 2t equals x, and What's that? What, else, what, was, what was the other one that it's got? It's just got T. Um, equals Y. Okay. Right, I'm just going to have to go up and have a look at what the actual equations are. You know, why keep the root sixes in it when, when we could just write it a simple way? It's a bit crazy, isn't it? Maybe I should go with what I've got the tick next to there for the way that I'll write. That's what I'm going to do, you know. I'm going to go with that tick because it's easiest. So, um, you know what? I'm going to back off from having root sixes and things in there, even though it'll totally work. Just go with what's easiest rather than what fell out of that equation it's just because it had unit vectors. So, uh, 1 plus... Two, um, one plus two times uh, that guy is equal to um, minus one minus two t. And then the next one is 1 plus that guy on line L3 equals T on line L2. And then 3 plus that guy is equal to 2 plus 3T on line L2. And we want to, once again, we want to just find the point of intersection, but it's got to be consistent. So let's um, solve these two. Right. So I'm going to put, I'm going to sub t equals 1 plus into this equation. So I've got 1 plus 2 equals minus 1 minus 2, 1 plus, because t equals that. So 1 plus 2 equals minus 1, minus 2, minus 2. Uh, and so we get four of those guys equals minus 1, minus 2, minus 4. So that guy equals minus 1. And therefore, uh, t equals 1 plus Minus one equals zero. T equals zero. Now we want to see if that's consistent. So I need to sub um, that guy equals minus one and t equals zero into the third equation, which is three plus it is two plus three t. So the left hand side equals three plus it 
equals 3 plus minus 1 equals 2. The right hand side equals 2 plus 3t equals 2 plus 3 times 0 equals 2. So the equations are consistent. So um, L2 and L3 intersect where um, this guy equals minus 1 and t equals 0. Now we can sub that into L2. Um, you can sub that L2. Or you could sub that into into L3, but it's probably easier just to sub t equals naught into L2. If you sub t equals 0 into L2, um, you get um, the point is, uh, sorry, y, y is t, so y is 0, x is minus 1 minus 2 times t, y is t, and z is 2 plus 3t. So if you're going from L2, you get x equals minus 1, y equals 0, and z equals 2. So um, q is minus 1, 0, 2. Alright, so does that minus 1, 0, 2, we've got to verify that aligns on, lies on um, line 1. So um, L1 is um, that x equals 2 plus s, and y equals minus s, and z equals 2 minus s. Um, so sub in q, um, then we have minus 1 equals 2 plus s, so s equals minus minus 1 plus minus 2, minus 3, is it? Minus 3. Yep, and then we've got um, 0 equals minus s. Hold on, what are you subbing it into? You've just written down L1 Uh-huh. <coughs> what are we trying to verify? It lies on L1. Okay, y equals minus s. So, y equals minus s. So, what well, can't be... Z we want to verify that P lies on it, not Q. Well, no wonder. <laughs> Q doesn't lie on it. I've just verified that. But I need to sub in that the P is 1, 1, 3. So 1 equals that and 1 equals that. And 3 equals uh, 2 minus S. So S here equals 1 minus 2 minus 1. And S equals minus 1. And if S also equals minus 1, it's consistent. Therefore, it lies on it, right? So equations are consistent. Therefore, P lies on um, L1. All right, so we've got our last question we've got to do now, and it's getting quite a long question here. So last question, we just want to know PQ, the distance PQ. It's the shortest distance between lines L1 and L2. All right, so just a quick diagram might help here. Here's, here might be Q and up here is P, and they lie on the line L3. So one way, I know what the coordinates of them are, that's 1, 1, 3, and Q was, um, Q was 
minus 1, 0, 2. So vector PQ is, um, and you just go uh, 1 PQ is minus 1, minus 1, and 0, minus 1, and 2, minus 3, which is uh, minus 2, minus 1, minus 1. So the size of vector PQ is the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is root 6. So that's one way to get the answer. Another way to get the answer is to um, consider that uh, L3 is equal to 1, 1, 3 plus uh, uh, this guy times 2, 1, 1. So we go to point, this is point P, and you go to point B and then you add on lambda times 2, 1, 1. So what I want to know is um, what happens, what, of, what am I adding on? when lambda is at its, well not lambda, but that whatever that sign is, is at its particular value. And that value is minus one, because we know that that's what it is for Q, to get to Q, right? For Q, this guy equals minus one. So um, we're adding on, sorry, I'll just, uh, Get down this page. We're going to P, this is how we're working with a line works, and add on this vector uh, minus 1 times 2, 1, 1. Right? So, so um, we add on um, the vector minus 2, minus 1, minus 1. And that which has size um, root 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared equals root 6. So, you know, there's a few ways that you could find that answer.